So I'll, uh, I'll talk over it. There's some uh, subtitles or titles at the bottom to explain, but we start with a model. And this is the model that somebody has designed uh, using SOLIDWORKS in this case. And they've gone through the effort of assigning material, transparency, some finishes. And let's say that we want to make another change and for instance, make the top, uh, this is sort of a, uh, one of those earbuds, uh, true wireless earbuds that are out there and are everywhere. But let's say that we wanted to make a more personal and a light green and I want to make the top faces of the earbuds green. So I go and select some green color in the appearances in SOLIDWORKS and assign it just to the face. So you can assign it to the body, you can assign it just to the face. And I'll do the same for the other one. I'm very slow, but I'll get there in the end. So once I'm happy with the way things look, I can go and save my model. Now in the past, what the user would have done, and that's what I'm doing now as well, the user would have saved this assembly as an STL. They could have saved it as multiple files or as an individual file. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna save it as one STL only. And I'm also saving the assembly as it is. And that's because that's what I'm gonna use to have a more powerful workflow. So one I've, once I've saved the file, uh, this I'm still creating the STL because I'm slower than when I'm talking. So I'll save the file and make sure it's what I want. And gives you a preview, you see the triangles, you might be happy or not, but let's assume that everything is, is nice. Now, I'll go into graphical print. Uh, this is the main application. Uh, there's a Stratasys J750, which is a polyjet printer uh, that's been selected. I'll import both the Solidasm, the assembly, and the STL that I just created. And that's where the magic of Texas happens. So you see here, and you see here that it's loading the part, and that's when we interact with Exchange to get the uh, assembly structure of the model and extract all the information. And you see the first difference. This is my STL. It's coming up as white. That's because the default material is white. And this is what we get from Hoops. And it's got all the colors that I wanted, including the transparency. So if the aim was just to print what I designed, I'm done. I just need to, print, to press print uh, and I'm done. But we don't stop there. Because the user may want to change different color, uh, test different color combinations. They want, for instance, to uh, well, change the material. So for the STL, I just have to change the color for the, just that one color. I'll go and select a certain pantone because I just want to show the user the main color of my, uh, of my assembly. Now, if I go to the model imported with Exchange, I got much more power. Firstly, I could disassemble and assemble it and uh, print alternative covers, for instance. In this case, I'm just making duplicates of the same model and I'm just changing the color of the cover and having a transparent red or a blue transparent or a green transparent model. There's something that went wrong with the um, compression of the, of the video, the, the, the color palette gamut is not as bad as it's shown there. But the idea is that in, with a few clicks, I just changed the color completely. I didn't have to ask my uh, user to go back and change the colors in the original software. Now, here I'm using a, a, another uh, approach. I just identified the cover and I'm just gonna make copies of it. So I'm gonna hide it from my original assembly because I want to test that the actual cover can slide back and forth. So I'm gonna hide it from here so it won't be printed. And then I make some copies on my tray and I just test different colors. So I'll go and select a pantone color, for instance, and I'll say I want a pink. And I make a few duplicates of it and I test other pantone colors that I might be interested in. So I'll go and, yeah, do a different selection. Now, in this presentation, I just focus on, on things like color uh, and transparency, but we got other range of material that actually uh, can can uh, mimic things like rubber. So you got some flexibility. So if you want to pre uh, print something that is uh, like a remote control, you can actually print the buttons and they feel like the buttons in a remote control. So you can give that tactile uh, feedback to the users. So once I managed to select all the colors that I want, because I really wanted the green, 
and I really wanted whatever other color I select, probably an orange, because it's the one that's missing. Yes, I was right. All that's left is to press print. hours later because I'm not claiming that it's going to be very quick. What you have is, well, the printed models here is something that I had in a presentation because, well, uh, the office is closed, as you might know, like, but I managed to go to the office and print some. So if you can see my screen, tell me if you can, because I cannot see me. Uh, it's the same model. Uh, it was printed slightly differently uh, because, well, people have added some extra faces and colors, but I got two different examples for different colors. So people can go and change their colors and try different things. But I think this model with two, two of these took like three hours to print, but it's incredibly high resolution. So you actually cannot feel it, cannot feel the slices. And I think that I'm actually done. So thank you very much. I hope it was clear.